some season of the Vex is finally over. And I gotta say, yes, well, I got used to the look of the armor. It is also kind of looking out, you know, time for new stuff. Although I'm gonna miss my weird Titan face, that looks funny. So, season of the begins, let's jump down into the tower and see what is new in stock. And of course, also we do some of the new things as well. So, first off, new things that we get. For example, this new ornament weapon set that we have here for the Titan. Kind of looking fresh, I think. At least I like the blue tone. But there's lots of new things, like finishers, which also can now be selected into a group of favorites. Whenever you trigger a finisher, it will actually be one of the favorites and not just a single one that you do every time. I gotta say, they're looking kind of cool. Other uh, things we have, of course, is also this Trader Primus shell. I like that look, definitely. Very cool. But there's also other Ergos shells coming in the season pad, of course. But before we move on to that, we have a small look at, of course, the new exotic weapon ornaments. Take a look here, of course, at this very nice hive version of the runes. We have this queen design, of course, for the Telesto and the Violent Exorcism. In the Season Pass, of course, if you own it, you will get right away the Symmetry Exo Rifle and a full armor set for your character. It will actually give you a little bit boost. Uh, in my case, I had 950 power overall without the ornament yet, and you can get a set with at least 951 throughout this. Kinda neat. As you can see, power level overall is 951. Looking into the symmetry, of course, this is a scout rifle, which is quite cool. It has two different kinds of firing modes. One fast shooting auto rifle, basically scout rifle version. It is very quick. It has some cool uh, mods, of course, and it has a dynamic charge. After you hit some critical shots, you can change it and use arc seek shots, actually. that fire definitely very well at enemies, as we see later in the video. Of course, other things that are also included in the season pass are things like this new emblem for Sage 14, as this is basically his new season. And of course, we have the Calibreaker, the legendary move from Saint 14, as it is told in the legend. Level 35, yet again, for the free pass owners, is when they can get the symmetry weapon, which is kind of fair, it doesn't take too long, I'd say, maybe two weeks. And of course, there's also new weapon ornaments coming, like for example, for this Mark of a Titan, which looks like this. And for the grease, we have these extra, you know, I don't know, plates. It is kind of looking distinct and also very nice, actually. But of course, the chess piece, we also have a small, but still distinct uh, pieces that add up on the ornament. I really like it. And oh, of course, don't forget, we also have new weapon ornaments, of course. Then also a new ghost chair, specifically for Saint-14 design. I mean, it's just like his helmet with a nice 14 on the side. And of course, the helmet, as you can see here, a bit different in shape, but definitely cool also with the color. Skyline Constellation is the weapon ornament for the symmetry, which looks actually very cool. I like that design. And for the emote of the season, we get Pigeon Feet after we finish it. Alright, so what happened in the last two weeks? I didn't play Destiny at all, I played Death Stranding. So, in case you're wondering, guess, I did actually buy a few ranks on the last season pass. Whatever. I call Ray sends us over to the Vexgate network on Mercury as time is acting a bit weird. And of course, as we will see soon, Osiris has a new thing for us. I mean, you saw the trailers, you know Saint 40 is coming back, but how do we get there? Well, we'll see. Perseverance for your ferocity. I'm proud to know you. No, thanks. Anyway, it is time to move over to Mercury, and as you can see here, on the destinations of Mercury, there's a new thing that we can actually fly to. Funny side note, in case you missed it, on Mercury you can also finally use your Sparrow, so if you're in the strike, for example in this area, you can use it now, not just in the new part, but also in the regular part of Mercury. Alright, but first we do anything, let's see actually what the symmetry weapon can do, and I gotta say... I like this one. Just look at it, it has only 20 shots, which is for some enemies a little bit too low, but actually as you can see, it is just very powerful in general. I can't wait to use this in PvP, make a video about that. And as you just saw, when you hold reload, you will actually change the final round. But anyway, let's see where Osiris is and how we talk to him. It is a means to walk the corridors of time. You've been busy, Guardian. 
When you slew the Undying Mind, you changed the course of history. And time is broken here on Mercury. I need your help instead. I met an emptiness I'm only beginning to understand. This new future dwarfed the Vex Apocalypse. It was annihilation at the subatomic level, reaching out forever. And so I left the forest. And I emerged to find that time is broken on Mercury. The Red Legion have run amok in timelines across the past, present, and future of this planet. If you're willing to help, I'll arm you to smash the Legion and collapse the timelines they've created. You'll need my sundial to do it. And as we can see now, our first task is to go to the Tangled Shore and actually use the pillars there, the obelisk, to stabilize time there. So, of course, we'll go over and check out what's happening there. All that you see here was not in the Sundial's original design. I built it so that an ally of mine could cheat death. You and your guardian cohorts know him as Saint-14. I failed to help him. And his death remains my greatest regret. As we land, we see right now, here, right next to the landing zone, there's this weird shape. And in case you don't read the bounty like I do, you just wander around and see what's happening. Of course, after you read what the bounty requires of you to do, it basically is just, you know, killing some of these Cabal, and uh, once you have gotten enough of them in, you get extra points for killing them with solar power, you can actually go to the obelisk again. So, let's go. dropping in everything we have. Actually, we need to do one more thing before this thing works, and that is to fight enemies with our light and our abilities. So, of course, we go in and do just that. Alright, as soon as this is done, of course, we come back and we can finally finish this obelisk for Osiris. And after that, we can come to the main attraction of this season, the Sundial. For that, we can actually see that this obelisk is part of a network and part also of a minigame. We have to collect energy to bring, you know, energy to this obelisk. And we can actually connect more of this obelisk to the whole network. It's a bit unclear right now how far we can do this but it seems at least to be a nice customization thing that we have here as you can see a missing link if you are at the sundial you can actually link specific obelisks you know that are matching to the loot that you can get at the end of the activity you'll see that in just a minute and if you link for example this one you have the chance to get either a sidearm or an auto rifle as you can see now it's actually linked and we can get the rewards after playing the sundial Moving back again, meeting Osiris, of course, and now it's finally time to jump into the Sundial activity and see what this is about. The Sundial is, of course, a six-man activity with matchmaking, just like the uh, activity that we had before. Therefore, we hit OK, we can actually jump in. So this is yet another activity that we have to select from the map of destinations, wait for matchmaking to finish, and then we just fly in, as we can see right now. And yet again, of course, we have these different activities that we do to progress a bar. And once that's done, we get to a final boss, be the final boss, and we're done with that. So let's see how that actually works out in action. Also, if you want, there's more symmetry gameplay. The first step actually is just, you know, playing some uh, enemies here and shooting them down. As soon as that is done, we go into the Sunder and see that we have actually a new time location opening up that, of course, invites us over 
So we have to do a new thing. So that was really done with the first phase. We jump in, activate the sun dial, if we spin around and give us a portal into a new time zone. Be careful though, this thing actually can hit you and can kill you. And in most cases, you actually not have any problem, of course, but if you're jumping like this dude, maybe you get hit and somebody else in your team needs to revive you, at least not after 30 seconds of bank or so. So, jumping in, of course, we have to defend this area again, just as we did in other parts. And I gotta say, you know, so far, kind of interesting how weak we appear. I'm level 951 right now, this is a level 850 activity, and most of the time, I just kill myself on accident. Just as if the shotgun is twice as powerful, oh, I guess. There is a power modificator on this week right now, and it's actually for void damage. So while the arc damage shotgun can kill me one shot, that is unknown to me, but I assume this is a bad mixture also with my rocket launcher that I used at the same time. After holding the first zone, it automatically continues on, and we actually have to hold two zones. So the six-man team that you uh, found for matchmaking just has to split up into two, one to the left, one to the right, and then, of course, you hold your position again and just fight against the hordes. It's not the most, you know, interesting part of gameplay, I'd say, but on the other side, who knows how they will change it up a little bit after a few more rounds. After that phase is over, we finally get some exposition by Osiris. I chase the horizons of Mercury. I had hoped to touch the ancient wisdom of the Traveler, but it did not know me. As I approached, it drifted ever farther from my grasp. But here, to look up and see nothing. This must be how the Fallen felt. Oh, and as you can see, this is what happens if you jump up too high. You actually get smashed into the wall and somebody else has to get you, so yeah, beware of that. Maybe just walk. Or go on the side wall, as you can see here. Let's begin the pre-final, of course, activity. Yet again, you can use your raid banners to get, of course, your super pack and also full of your ammo. And what you have to do in this area basically is super simple. You have to fight these Cabal dudes, take, of course, the drop, and not fall down like I ah, just almost did. And then once that is done, actually, you can throw that on the big enemy. That will cause, of course, a strike to happen, and the Cabal basically kill their own leader, which is kind of funny, in a sense, and at the same time, it's very fulfilling. You can see an example right here as I pick it up, just throw it basically close to that dude, if you're lucky, even next to each other. And you can even do multiple of these basic bosses, I guess, at once because they're dropping back again, as you can see. The shield only goes down if you use these drops, but you can damage him, of course, additionally with your weapons as soon as that shield is disabled temporarily. And once that activity is done, we finally come to the big boss fight of the Sundire. Right now, we only have the Hover Voice, but I'm assuming there will also be coming more to this activity later throughout the season. And remember, of course, this activity is only available in this season for the next three months. So you can play this actually if you're a premium pass owner or a free pass owner. And of course, also, don't forget to go charge up again at the flag. In this boss fight, actually, you have different of these sirens appearing that you have to punch, just like in the first raids again. But be wary, some of them do actually have very heavy damage on you. I, I have to admit, I don't know quite why you have to punch them and why you don't. Uh, but definitely, if these bubbles appear around you, shoot them down. There we go. Almost died from this one. And as you can see, I actually <laughs> respawned too late. The boss was already done, but hey, whatever. I just shoot a rocket just to see if I can hit something as well. We get dropped back at the sundial and can finally get a loot. And again, based on the obelisk that we're linked to the sundial, we can pick our rewards now. This time we have a breach light, which is an sidearm, and the steel feather repeater, which is an auto rifle, actually five levels higher than I was. And you know, since I'm here, I'm just gonna quickly try the steel feather thing, the auto rifle that I got. It is actually linked to your subclass and getting a bonus perk. Since I was playing for the solar class, actually, it was much more stable. And as you can see, wow, reload and stabilization are insane on this auto rifle. That and, of course, with the symmetry weapon, are probably going to be a very cool PvP loadout that I will do a next video on. And of course, if you don't want to miss that, subscribe. 
But of course, before we leave, let's take a quick look at this season artifact and what this will have on offer on us. Yes, you have to play at least one round of the Sundial and link at least one obelisk until you can get this artifact. And from then on, with more experience, you can level up with that one as well, as we have seen, of course, in the last season. Though this time, thanks to a few changes to the season pass, there will also be more bonuses available for your progress. So the more you play, basically, the more advantages you will get for all playing this season. And of course, you get a nice emblem with that. Just a small side note. And this is the Lantern of Osiris, as you can see right now. In the first card you can play right away. We have anti barrier mods, of course, and one also with overload rounds for the auto rifle yet again. We'll see, of course, what the meta will be, which mods it will take very soon. I don't know if I personally will do a video on them, but necessarily, of course, the Destiny community will provide you with much more information. All right, and that's it. Thanks again for watching our Destiny 2 coverage of the new Season of Dawn with Saiyan 14. I will definitely play more of it as soon as I can, probably this weekend, and do another video for you, of course, if you liked it. If you did, show that, of course, with a like and maybe a comment if you want to know more about this season. Are you playing it, actually? Maybe you also want to get the premium pass? I don't know. I hope I can give you at least a little insight into it if you're interested in general. Thanks again, of course, and watch some of the other videos if you're linked right here, and have a nice day, and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.